Hey everybody, it's just me, it's Steve Simonson, and I can tell you that we are live with awesomers.com slash 140 right now. And we're doing uh, two streams today. Uh, we're getting the, the normal live recording, and we're also on Facebook Live. So if you happen to be on Facebook and you are playing along at home, you're welcome to ask me anything as we record this Awesomers episode. Uh, hey, Brandon, uh, welcome. I see you on Facebook there. Uh, I'm doing an Ask Me Anything se session today and also talking about some hot news that's, that's up. And so uh, feel free to uh, join in if you have something that's uh, a burning question in your mind. Uh, for those who are listening to the recording, you can go to awesomers.com slash 140 and you'll be able to see the details and, and any links and show notes. Uh, hello, Shannon. I see you joining there as well. I'm going to talk just a minute about some news that I think is interesting uh, particularly for marketplace sellers. So if you sell on Amazon, uh, you may have heard about some of the political discussion around breaking up Amazon and some of these other big tech companies. And uh, I find some of the reactions by Amazon interesting, and I wonder what your reaction is as well. So uh, recently, uh, Bezos wrote a letter which was um, talking about the success of marketplace sellers. I'm going to quote him, and then I'll, I'll add some more context. So uh, on a letter released Thursday, that's uh, today, um, he says that success in the marketplace sales comes largely, this is from Bezos' word, largely because we helped independent sellers compete against our, meaning Amazon's own, first party business by investing in and offering them the very best selling tools we could imagine and build. These tools include fulfillment by Amazon, the Prime Loyalty Program, and so on, he wrote. So, first of all, hey, Mikhail. Uh, hey, Diane. Nice to see you on, on board. Talking a little bit about uh, some of the news. And, of course, uh, if you have any burning questions, don't hesitate to put them in on the, uh, the chat, and I'll try to get to them. So, this letter written by Bezos basically says, hey, we helped third-party marketplace sellers instead of helping ourselves. But, of course, we know the real truth that while they have positioned the third-party marketplace, it was not uh, to – to somehow subvert their own interests, their first party sales continue to increase on a per dollar basis. The percentage of sales that going to third party is uh, continuing to increase. Therefore, their percentage of first party is going lower and lower. But let's not kid ourselves. Due to the overall growth of e-commerce and Amazon in particular, those sales continue to go up. Furthermore, it's not like Amazon is doing us all the favors. We are putting in billions of dollars of inventory basically on consignment uh, and at our entire risk, our risk of marketing, our risk of inventory, our risk of currency, our risk of being knocked off by the rampant counterfeits. Uh, so it's not so much of a favor that Amazon is doing us uh, as opposed to kind of a, a quid pro quo operation. Uh, anyway, that's my opinion. Uh, I think Bezos also missed the point and certainly did mention in his letter where he's trying to beat back some of this uh, political pressure the, the fact that they're knocking off our brands left and right. Uh, Amazon has, I can't even remember the number, over 120 of their own private label brands that are growing even faster than the third party marketplace in terms of percentage of sales increase. This is a fact that, um, again, uh, Bezos is not bringing up uh, as a defense, uh, for example, to the antitrust uh, threats coming from the politicians. So again, to set context, the, the politicians are saying, hey, maybe Amazon should be broken up. And two, they're also saying Amazon shouldn't unfairly compete against marketplace sellers. In Europe, there's already an investigation underway and people are calling for it in the US as well to say, hey, is it fair for Amazon as a marketplace seller to basically to compete against these marketplace sellers using all their data, using all of their information against them, essentially. And I, I have a lot of people who tell me all the time, well, it's no different than Walmart or Target or, you know, a large grocery store like Kroger bringing in competitors and then doing their own private label knockoffs. What's the difference? They own the marketplace. They can do whatever they want. And I would, I would beg to differ and say there is, in fact, a difference you know, Amazon as a part of their um, registration or ungating process, they often require marketplace sellers to disclose their suppliers, right down to the, the origin addresses, you know, names, numbers, contacts, information, et cetera. 
I've never had to do that with any of the big boxes we've served. Uh, with very limited exception when it comes to auditing or things like that, which were always at arm's length. The auditors were never in contact with the, the company itself. So like Home Depot or uh, Sherwin-Williams or Costco or any of these types of companies, they've never been in our business the same way Amazon has been in our business. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's a little disingenuous that this letter from Bezos essentially says that they're somehow subordinating themselves to marketplace sellers and building cool tools and, and basically giving all the, the third party guys all the advantages. I just don't buy it. I, I don't think that's what's actually happening. Uh, now, it's not to say I don't value what's, what does exist and, and so forth. I do think there's clearly an opportunity there, but it's not just a, uh, a slam dunk equation that, that uh, I think that Amazon is positioning and certainly that Bezos is trying to clap back on the polit political people that are beating them down. I'm, I'm not a fan of politicians, frankly, but I can say that I do believe um, there will be some sort of requirement that Amazon needs to, to take seriously our privacy and our ability to compete when we are having to supply all this information for compliance purposes, importation, and, and other ungating requirements that they have. So anyway, that's, to me, fair is fair. That's, that's the bottom line. Um, so one of the other things, uh, by the way, is uh, Amazon is now giving third-party sellers access to demographic and other analytics. So if you're familiar with uh, demographics in principle, you're going to know that Amazon is now started unlocking free customer data uh, and, and demographics and related uh, information to, to give your brand analytics additional information. And of course, we know it's been challenging to get enough insights and understanding of what's happening sometimes with our customers. And so this definitely can help with our marketing strategies. And it's something that you know, I generally welcome. The, the brand analytics, the brand uh, data, and some of the things that are being opened up are positive things. I want to give Amazon full credit for those. Uh, that's def definitely something that's new. And, you know, I think that larger sellers will probably continue to go from, from vendor central on into uh, seller central as the case, uh, as that option is there, because all of these types of services used to cost money in Vendor Central. As a matter of fact, we used to have to pay around 30 grand a year for something they called Amazon Retail Analytics, which more or less is, is very, very uh, similar to the current brand analytics. Um, it's, just, it, it's just free. <laughs> so Seller Central, uh, kudos to that uh, team. So there's a couple news bits. Let me see if I have any more on my list before I, I jump into uh, something else here. Uh, oh, by the way, today, I think it was today or yesterday, Amazon announced that it's going to start charging sales tax on many of the services that we pay for, like FBA and other things that they say sales tax is due on. Now, I, I can tell you that it's, to me, it's improper that they try to put a sales tax on things that are part of our cost of goods, part of the generation. And of course, the uh, omnipresent uh, Paul Raffleson, who's always on top of these things, he pointed out that he thinks it is an illegal tax on cost of goods sold and that the Online Merchant Guild is going to try to fight that. And you can go to the onlinemerchantsguild.org and learn more about that. As always, we support their efforts and uh, we think that you know, they're doing a very good job to try to keep some of these uh, seller issues on uh, a top of mind for Amazon and for the legal uh, part of the equation, California uh, politicians in particular. Now, I, I hate politics, I'll tell you, but it's the politicians that write the laws and enforce the laws, and we've got to get their ear, and I think Paul and his uh, gang over there is doing a heck of a job on getting attention. Uh, I, I should also say kudos to that online merchant skill team because they've pushed AB 147 in California, which essentially requires Amazon to, as the marketplace to start collecting the sales tax. That's step one. There are other steps that need to happen, like getting the, the nutty and over pushy and I think illegally aggressive um, tax department down there. They have a long, you know, CTDFA or whatever it is. The, this California tax department is operating, in my, way, in my view, in a very illegal and highly um, unfriendly way. And they're, they're basically 
again, my opinion, I think they're lying to a lot of sellers saying that they have nexus or they have past liabilities when Amazon clearly should have that liability uh, entirely. So uh, again, their efforts over there at the Online Merchant Skill, I think are good and uh, they help all of us. I think you should participate. Go, go throw them some money. Why not? It's a good thing to do. Uh, hey, everybody who's joining. Uh, I'm seeing guys coming in and out, so I'm just going to keep on with a couple other things. So that sales tax that we're talking about uh, being added to FBA fees is something that deserves a fight because basically people's fees, you know, could go up by, you know, seven to ten percent depending on which states start to enforce such a requirement, which is directly a part of our cost of goods, and that's not the purpose of sales tax. Sales tax is supposed to tax the end consumer. So uh, once again, the tax man is trying to put their uh, hand in our pocket and we need to uh, take steps to combat that. Uh, I, I do wanna call attention to, let me just see if there's uh, any other uh, bullet points I had here, make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, do, 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 do. I call attention to just a couple things that I've, I've mentioned over the past few days in various uh, channels. First of all, if you go to empowery.com slash global, we have a pilot program that we're, uh, that the co-op is testing, and I'm confident that it will allow people to go into other marketplaces, I'm talking about cross-border trade, faster and with less pain than you ever imagined. And the cost is nominal, uh, it's extraordinarily smart investment, it's, it's very clear you can do the economics yourself. This will allow the people who wanna maybe go from the US or Canada into the EU, a very fast way to get into there. And I'm talking about potentially less than 30 days. Once you're approved, uh, you could be live there with no VAT headaches, no paperwork headaches, no legal entity headaches, no delays, uh, without breaking any laws, by the way. <laughs> 100% as always above board. I'm Mr. White Hat. Uh, you know, I might break some rules uh, from time to time, but I'll never break a law. I'm not going to jail for nobody. Uh, so check that out, empowery.com slash uh, global and you can get some of the details and make sure that you're on the list uh, My buddy Kevin King and I uh, we are going to make a very important Business concept available. I'm, I'm parsing my words very carefully making sure I don't give up anything We're gonna do that it very very soon um, It's coming up if you haven't already jump onto the Kevin and Steve .com list and be sure that you're first to know on that because it's it's a very narrow opportunity and anybody who knows me know that I don't uh, do fake FOMO or fake scarcity. So it's certainly not something that, uh, you know, you can take it to the bank when I say there's not a lot of it. Uh, I also want to share with you, if you go to awesomers.com and check out the blog there, we just released a, an article and it was co-written by some great guys. Uh, and in particular, you know, guys who've written for Forbes and the, the White House and just really talented people. And basically it's kind of like a, an overview and then a resource list of experts basically and these experts 61 of them by the way 61 experts put together and shared their favorite tools and software for their e-commerce business and I'm going to just kind of take you through some of those uh, comments because I think so many of them are very interesting so Rob Watson uh, the CEO of Webby Dextrous uh, when asked what his favorite e-commerce tool uh, for e-commerce sellers he says the following I prefer WooCommerce for e-commerce, RingCentral for unified communications as a service, and Pantheon.io for hosting. And that's Rob's uh, comments directly. You can see that and link over to his site if you like. Uh, we went on to ask uh, Brian Hudek, uh, who runs Brian Hudek Web Design, what's his favorite? He also talked about WooCommerce. And the, he, he goes on in great detail talking about how you know WordPress is a is a open source piece of software that has a huge community, you know, literally millions of millions of websites and hundreds of thousands of business users. And then WooCommerce is a open source piece of software that fits into that as well. And although like anything, these require a little bit of maintenance, there are rich ecosystems of developers, plugins, software, etc. And so I definitely would uh, highly encourage you to check that out. Uh, one of the uh, other interviewees, one of these experts, uh, Betsy DeVille, talks about the fact that Google Analytics is such an important tool for her to see what's happening on her website. And she felt that it was important to call that out. Uh, another uh, expert, Leah Love, 
Uh, she talks about that her favorite e-commerce tool is the WooCommerce Builder for DV. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, the DV Builder. But this uh, concept helps them design their e-commerce store and includes several WooCommerce modules to kind of help you get the job done. And one of my favorites, she calls on as well, which is SEM Rush to, to measure, monitor your site's performance. Now, I know a lot of folks out there are Amazon sellers, and you're not focused on your own website. But I do want to let you know that, you know, your own website long term should be an asset. Doesn't mean you need to pull your attention away from Amazon. I basically say, you know, get to 50 grand a month on Amazon and then start figuring out where your brand should go from there. Uh, a couple other experts I want to call out. Uh, Shane Griffiths with Clarity Online, he talks about that, you know, his go-to is the, the WooCommerce platform. He also called out the DB theme powered by uh, WP Engine Hosting. And I can say that there's some really good hosts out there and Empower has got a, a bunch of these uh, lists of hosts and, and other ways for you to kind of take advantage of the open source pieces as well as some of the add-ons like excellent themes, plugins, etc. not to mention the hosting. And you can go to Empowery.com to see some of those options and, and get in touch with them. Uh, another expert, uh, Kirsty Demet with uh, Bed and Breakfast Blogging, she's the CEO over there. She uh, when asked what her favorite uh, tool is, she loves the, the wish list uh, plugin for her membership website uh, because she, she then is able to offer video training with step by step and she sees the demand based on the wish list. Uh, hey, hello, uh, good to see you, buddy. Hope I'm uh, get my pronunciation uh, all right. Uh, you can see the green screen behind me for the Facebook uh, folks, but the people watching later on uh, the regular channel will see something shown on the green screen. I'm not sure what the image is, I'll be honest with you. Uh, continuing on with some of these experts, because when you, you know, we took months and, and talked to and interviewed uh, and got input from 61 experts. And uh, let's see what, uh, so uh, Gary Calhoun is a GA Media Solutions uh, CEO, and he basically says his go-to tool when providing an online store is WooCommerce. He loves it because it's flexible and easy to implement and maintain. Uh, and then he can also customize it. So we, you know, so many Amazon sellers, we kind of have a, a narrow field of focus sometimes. And you hear Shopify from a few folks and you're like, oh, well, Shopify, that's it, done and done. And Shopify's got a lot of great points and there are many times where I would recommend Shopify. But there's equal number of times, perhaps more, that I would recommend people take a look at WordPress and WooCommerce as well. Uh, there are lots of ways to leverage these different pieces of uh, software to make your site look and feel totally unique and totally interesting and have customization that goes far beyond what you can do when needed on Shopify. Uh, so let's see here. Uh, let's see. I've got uh, another expert, Philip Berger uh, with Holly Helps Marketing. He's the co-owner and lead developer. When asked he, what his favorite tool was, he says he loves creating websites for his own clients and his go-to tool is WooCommerce. He loves WordPress because the flexibility and support is naturally making at a nice platform. And I want to call out, just to support Philip's point here, a lot of people don't realize that one of the key ways to get um, good search engine traffic, good SEO, free organic traffic from Google, is to have a really good blog, to have good content. And WordPress sites are naturally structured in such a way that you get a lot better SEO benefit, at least in our testing, WordPress outperforms every other platform when it comes to getting SEO and natural search rankings when you have good content, of course, than any other uh, tool. And that includes the, the blog that is built into Shopify and other kind of pre-made things like Wix or uh, Square or things like that. Uh, no question in my mind that WordPress continues to just beat the crap out of them, uh, to coin a phrase. All right, so uh, another uh, expert goes on when asked uh, what their favorite tool is. They talked about Clavio because it's got native integration with so many e-commerce platforms. And uh, you know that is a pretty well-known tool to, to help with marketing automation and follow-up. And I tell you, uh, whether you choose, and by the way, that tip comes from Craig Smith at Trinity Insight. 
whether you decide that Clavio is right for you or some other system, I just really encourage you to have a system. Do the same kind of follow-ups that Amazon does. Make sure they're, they know when their order goes out. By the way, if you have really good um, integrations, you can even send those things, those notifications about orders, for example, through a messenger bot uh, on Facebook or what have you. Um, let's see, I wanna just see if there's any other call-outs. There's so many wonderful uh, call-outs. One of the ones I wanna really give credit to is Nick Jordan. Uh, he runs Nick from Seattle. He's the president over there. And not only does he talk about you know, how much he appreciates that um, WooCommerce and Shopify and, and Amazon Seller Central, all important, he uh, proposes that people check out a company called brandchamp.io. Halawe, uh, who's joining us live, also says that Clavio is amazing. And so that's another shout out for that, that's good. So the Brandchamp, uh, their effort is to try to help people get uh, ambassadors and, and recruit people so the ambassadors help influence people you know, to become aware of your site. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, brandchamp.io. So there's th this blog is over at awesomers.com. Uh, it's a long uh, <laughs> URL. It's awesomers.com slash entrepreneurs slash top dash e-commerce dash experts dash tools. <laughs> and it goes on. So forget that. Just go to Ospers.com, click on the blog. It's near the top right now. Uh, and you can check that out for yourself. Uh, let's see. Recently, we've re released a podcast that talk about things like um, Project Zero, the Going Global, uh, some of the things that you need to know about e-commerce and the, the things that consumers think about e-commerce. I think all of those are important. You should check those out. And if you haven't already, go ahead and leave us a, a, a review. And uh, thanks for, for folks who've already done that. I know a couple of people who are watching now have done that. And it really does mean a lot to us. And I have to tell you, I got a, a ranking report today. We're like number one in Singapore and number two in uh, some other uh, country um, uh, for some of the business podcasts. So the thing has really picked up a lot of steam here in 2019. And I don't know exactly why, but... Uh, you know, you sharing and, and reviewing and, and subscribing is always helpful. So uh, if you guys have questions, go ahead and get them in now. If we don't uh, see questions, we'll, we'll kind of head out and, and uh, move on to our next thing. But I had a little time today and I want to make sure that I gave uh, some of that time back to entrepreneurs. And while I wait, I want to just do a, a special call out. If you are thinking about coming to the Empower event in May, I want to give you a few reasons why you really shouldn't miss it. Uh, and these are things that I'm not going to put on the promotions page and, and uh, Empowery can't really talk about because we like to keep things, you know, kind of low key. Uh, but I can tell you that, you know, we're going to, for example, introduce you to a resource. I'll put it like that. I'm phrasing carefully that will allow you, if you wish, to get a vendor central account. Um, some people want a vendor central account. There's a lot of guys in China buying vendor central accounts for, you know, twenty twenty five thousand dollars and there's no reason to buy an account, set it up properly, set it up through proper channels. So if you want a vendor central account, we can introduce you to a resource. Also, if you wanna figure out how to get on Costco.com or in Costco stores or Costco roadshows, we can introduce you to an agency who can evaluate your product and give you coaching and decide, you know, help you decide if that's a viable opportunity. We've got another super um, off the radar sales channel and uh, I know, I've actually vetted a couple of these uh, customers of theirs, actually vendors, guys like us who sell products to the catalog. And there's more than one doing over a million dollars a month just with this catalog. And as old school as it sounds, <laughs> when you send out millions of catalogs to targeted active buying customers, you can make some sales. So uh, especially if you have any products uh, targeting older people, uh, and by the way, older people, let's call it 65 plus, they buy for their kids, their grandkids, and themselves. But especially grandkids and themselves, those are the hot items. So if you have anything like that, you're gonna to wanna to join us in Seattle. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, you're gonna get some access to some Amazon Insiders. I, I'm not gonna go into more, but it'll be something unique, perhaps that you've never had the opportunity to do before. We're gonna have um, people who talking about how to sell and exit your business in a very professional and productive way. Even if you're not ready today, they're going to talk about how you prepare yourself for the next 12, 24, 36 months, whatever it is, to make sure you're on the right footing. 
we've got the great Kevin King coming up, and he's going to deliver an hour and a half of just packed tips and tricks, as he always does. He is uh, a wonderful guy. we got the great Tim Francis coming up as well, who's also going to tell you basically the number one thing you can do to uh, gain more time in your life. And we, we have used his process and his uh, concept, and we love it. Uh, and highly recommend it. So that's another uh, thing. We've got uh, Rich Goldstein, a great patent attorney coming in, and he can tell you kind of the, the down and dirty on either how to prepare yourself for patent, how to avoid any patent infringement, all kinds of wonderful things. Really, really good stuff. So there's actually a lot more than that too. Um, and, you know, fundamentally, these are really, really uh, fun events. The networking is fun. The people are fun. And if you can't get 10x on your ROI, you're just not doing it right, honestly. It's, it's a, a really terrific opportunity. So uh, for everybody who's joined us live, we thank you. Uh, I, this, most of the questions I see, we kind of covered before. So I'm going to uh, leave those to the side. I'm getting them on my uh, private IM. And uh, if you do decide you want to get more uh, active or involved, again, go to awesomers.com slash podcast, and you can keep up with the podcast we're uh, releasing. And for this particular episode, if you're listening, you can go to awesomers.com slash 140. Uh, that page, when it goes live, you'll be able to see kind of any relevant show notes or details. There won't be a ton of stuff, but there'll be a few links on there. And uh, this is how you'll be able to play back this particular episode as well. So thanks, everybody. Uh, it's been great to see you. And uh, I love entrepreneurs. Uh, if you're out there, uh, let's make sure we get connected. See you later, everybody. Bye-bye. All right, then now we're down to just the, the Zoom community. And I just wanna give you guys uh, one little uh, shout out. So this is our regular recording. We do it generally on Zoom. And I wanna just share with you that if you uh, would like to come to the Seattle conference, this is uh, something that we don't talk about much, go to awesomers.com slash, oh, excuse me, uh, empowery.com slash contact and ask for the uh, Go50 Now discount and uh, you can get 50% off a general admission ticket. It's a super secret. So don't share that around. You have to ask for it uh, through channels because we don't want a, a coupon code going viral. But if you go there, they'll be able to hook you up. And uh, that basically means two for one can come to the general admission. Love to see you there. Uh, again, oscars.com slash 140, everybody. Uh, appreciate you. See you later. Bye-bye.